Coming to you straight from the Rio Grande and beyond. And beyond. Broadcasting to the four corners of the globe. So grab your seat, your coffee, or your sundowner. Okay, everybody, here we go. On point, as always. This is Gloves Off. Gloves Off. Gloves off is always on point. On point. Bringing you the best on current issues, community affairs, and the happenings around us. This segment of Gloves Off is brought to you by the best. So pay them a visit. Check them out. This is Gloves Off. If you've ever wondered, if you ever had a clue what would happen if Batman, the Avengers, the X-Men fought the 47 Ronin, you will have great hitting, power strikes, and speed. This event will be known as the North Texas Stick Fighting Championships. It's open to all martial artists. This is where legends are formed, where they're forged, where they are founded. Sign up now. Call the number 956-401-4868 and look up the website at www. Dot S -A -V -A -T -E dot biz. So remember, this is for serious martial artists. If you're not serious, sit back and whisper about the event. <laughs> if not, we'll see you there. State Re Representative Richard Raymond, how are you doing? How you doing, man? Good to see you. Good? Yeah, I'm good. Feeling good. You're feeling good? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the best part, you know, feeling good. Yeah. Well, you know, we had a long session in, in Austin, legislative session, working on a lot of stuff, uh, but, you know, we did a lot of good things, and I feel good about it. And candidly, we work together, Democrats and Republicans, and, um, you know, we got things done. So we keep saying we, we wish that Washington would take a page from our, our book, 
And I think our Congressman Henry Quayle, who of course was a state rep for a long time, uh, took that to Washington. The, 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 the uh, approach that we have used in Texas, and Henry was good at it, uh, in trying to work with everybody, and he does that up there. It's just there are a lot of people up there that uh, they can't bring themselves like to work together, you know, and it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't work very well. But we did well, and you know, we finished a few weeks ago, so it's been catching up with other things. So Enjoy, enjoying the nice, uh, you know, uh, tropical weather. <laughs> what are some good good things that are coming up, or what do you what do you see in the near future that's going to change Texas? Well, movie? look, I mean, you know, of course, we deal with we got to pass a budget, and we passed the budget, two hundred fifty billion dollars. Didn't raise any taxes. That's important. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't done that. I mean, I've never voted for a tax increase, to, to give you an example. And, uh, but what we also did, because the economy was good and we had good, good revenues coming in, so we invested in education. We invested in property tax cut, property tax relief, which is very important to me. I pushed it really hard. I've been working on this and working closely with the governor for two and a half years, more by now. So he's a Republican, I'm a Democrat, but I said, you know what, I don't care where you go in the state of Texas, whether there are a lot of people who vote for Democrats, a lot of people who vote for Republicans, they're going to agree on this. We got to do something about property taxes. So we did, and we, you know, we're using five billion dollars, five billion that's going to be used to lower property taxes across the state of Texas. I think that's was, first of all, it's the biggest uh, tax cut we've ever had, and I pushed it hard. Um, the other thing is uh, that we reform property taxes to where cities and counties and schools even cannot increase. You know, right now under current law. If they increase by 8%, right, the taxes go up, then, then people can call for what's called the rollback election. They, but they gotta get a petition, they gotta get people sign it, et cetera, et cetera. We changed that. So now it, it's gonna be 2.5%, right? And so if it goes to two, more 2.5 two or more, that has to be a petition. There's an automatic election. And what I say is, and I had, I had some Democrats that, that did not agree with me, um, and, and a lot of Republicans didn't like it either, but I said, look, what we're allowing in the law is that we, we're telling cities and counties especially, work your budget, treat it like it's, like it's yours in, in terms of, I promise you, when we have our own money and our own budget at home, we're looking at how we're spending it, are we being careful with it, et cetera. And I feel that with cities and counties and the state, for that matter, we have to make sure that we're looking at it and say, you know, the people that are paying us, that are sending that money in, they're counting on us to, to spend it right, to be uh, efficient. And so cities and counties, we're basically telling them, make sure you're as efficient as you can be. And then, if there are other things that you need, where you're gonna need more than that 2.5% increase instead of up to eight, if you're gonna need more than that, you can take it to the people. Sure. And what I have said, and I said it on the floor of the House, I gave a speech on, on, on the, tax, the property tax reform. I said, look, if there's anything that a city council or the county government, they think they really need, the people really need it, but it's going to cost $100 million or $200 million, whatever it's going to be, the taxes are going to go up. I, I said, we are allowing them to take it to the people for a vote. And the people want it, they'll vote for it. Because, but, they, but you're telling them, you're going to pay for it. You're not hiding it. You're putting it in the light of day. You're gonna pay for it. So do you wanna do this? And if they say yes, if they want it, they'll come out and vote, and they'll vote for it. If they don't want it, it won't pass. And we've seen that here. We saw it like with the bond, some bond elections have passed, some sure. of them haven't. So it's kind of like the same thing. And, and, I, and so I, I told people that were against it, I said, we are, in my view, empowering communities more. Sure. You know, Paul? Because what I think will happen is this, if there's something that the city council feels very strongly, hey, we got to do this, but it's going to cost more money, we got to raise more taxes. Okay, you got to take it to the people. You go out there, you talk about it, you make the arguments, you let people ask you questions and all. And, and again, if they want to pay that bill, they're going to pass it. And if they don't, uh, then it won't pass. You know, you're absolutely correct, because, you know, we saw that with several elections here, yeah. one with the jail. And that was that the most recent, most, yeah, most recent yeah. one. And also with the convention center. Yeah. And the city shot it, I mean, the citizens shot it down. They didn't want it. They didn't want it. And um, so if it would have been just thrown out there and said, we're, we're voting for this and it's going to happen, it's right. going to be wrong. You know, so I think, I think uh, number one, 
you all are the representatives of the people and the people need to understand that. And I think now more empowerment towards the people, I think that's gonna change a lot of things in the future. I think it's good. I mean, I, I, again, I believe it. <coughs> One, that people are paying too much in property taxes, they're sick and tired of it. I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican, liberal, conservative, they're sick and tired of property taxes and say, we gotta do something. We have gotta do something. And we did. We provided the most significant t property tax reform that's ever passed. And we're buying down $5 billion of property taxes right away. And then we're making sure that it, it can't come back up, right? That if it's going to come up, people have a vote. And, you know, I also think, Paul, I mean, ironically or interestingly, I mean, this may be a way that more people get to go vote. We have so many people, you know this, we have so many people that don't vote in this city, in this county, in this state, in this country for that matter. So I think that what this is, is it's a really good way to get people to get more involved. involved. Either to vote for it or vote against. That's up to you. I don't care. But the important thing is that you participate. And you know what? If I'm for something and we have but we had eighty or ninety percent of the people turn out to vote and they voted against it, that would make me happy because at least I knew that we had a lot of people make let their voice be heard. And we've seen and we've seen that. We've seen that with the elections here in Webb County. Yeah. In, the in the last I would say what, fifteen years yeah. uh, the voting turnout has been going down. What where do you where do you think that the problems at? Is it the communications towards the voters, or the voters are just tired, or I think it's two. Quite, quite I think it's two or three things. One, you know, even though people always, I mean, people can always do better. You know, you sure. you, you want to improve your life, you want to improve your kids' lives, whatever. But uh, but this is a great country, of course, and and so I think a lot of people do pretty well, all things considered, and so they don't feel the urgency to go participate. They just don't. I think it's one of it. The other thing is they, they're not inspired to, to go vote. They, they can think of a hundred different reasons why they can't. No tengo tiempo. No, pues tengo que ir para acá. Tengo que, tengo que hacer esto. Tengo que hacer el otro. I've got to go to Corpus Christi for something. We give them two weeks. Two weeks of early vote we give them. If you can't find time to go vote, then you just don't, you just don't care enough to go vote. You know, and that's, that's something that, you know, I've, I've had friends from from overseas, come from other countries, and in other countries, it's mandatory that yeah, you go, yeah, vote. They go vote. You better go vote. Yeah. And if you don't go vote, there's a tariff that's added to your license, driver's license. So when you go, like in France, you go over there and you get your driver's license. They say, "Well, you didn't vote the last time. You didn't vote the year before. So here's <laughs> I, here's I, uh, I, you have to pay this much extra, you know." And so people do that, you know. Uh, maybe we have to do. Maybe we have to implement that. I don't. We, I don't know. We, we won't. You know, we won't ever make people pay. To vote, to vote. I mean, we're not gonna we're not gonna force them because we're a free society. Sure. But but we wish this beautiful flag you have right here, the United States flag. You know, we wish that more people. I wish more people would look at it and say, you know, it 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 took so much to get us to where we are today with that flag and what it represents and what it's and what each one of those stars stands for and what each stripe stands for. It took so many people losing their lives. It took so many people willing to risk it all. It took so many people having to work so hard, and and we should respect it enough to go vote. Even if you don't vote, and I say this and I mean it with all my heart, even if we don't vote the same, we won't vote for the same person, or you don't vote for me, or you vote. The most important thing is if we could get a, a big participation of, of voters, then you know, Paul, that what you're getting, the, the results you're getting is what the people really want. Oh, no, you're absolutely correct. And I'm, and, and uh, I'm gonna change it a little yeah. bit, How, um, you know, I saw the other day a saying, it says, I wish Americans would love America like Texans love Texas. It's funny. You know, and I was like, it makes sense because you came in here and you said, you know, the, be the beautiful flag, because yeah. it's a gorgeous flag. Yeah. And, you know, when, when, my, uh, when my sister graduated, we were in New York and national anthem comes up and my father and I and we stood up there, we pledged of allegiance, we put our hand over our heart, and we stood up there. Everybody else was just talking, sitting down, hats on. And, really? And, and we saw a couple of other, of other folks over there that, uh, that, you know, they were pledging allegiance. And after that, you know, he noticed that I was watching, come back, and he goes, where are you from? And I go, well, you know, we're from Laredo, Texas. And he goes, it's only us Southerners that pledge allegiance. <laughs> and I go, where are you from? And he said, Louisiana. He was from Lake Charles, and you know we talked a little bit. And I said, I was like, well, you know, makes sense, you know. But well, 
I think people and, take it for granted, man. That's Look, what it they is. They take it for granted. It's like, you know, kids, our own kids, you know, friends, their children. If, if they get everything they want, sure, they don't have to work hard at it. They take it for granted, man. You know, they just do. You know, people that can, like, you know, thankfully, you know, we can help our kids go to school, to college, whatever. Michelle and I, when we went to college, we were on our own, man. Sure. I was on my own. I, I started, you know, working and filing my income taxes when I was 18 years old, man, because I was on my own. And a lot of potted meat and crackers, brother. Of course. And, and, and man, I was so happy there. when I had enough money to buy a water burger. I was so excited. And so, and I'm not trying to make it sound like I was dirt poor. Just I was on my own. My parents really couldn't help me. And toward the end, my grandfather helped me for one semester with, with rent, and that helped me a lot like, to try to finish up. But I don't take for granted, you know, but other kids that, you know, they have the opportunity because their parents can help them. They take things for granted, man. Of course. And so I think that's what's going on with, with America, with so many people that don't vote. They, they have a pretty good life, Paul. They can get in the car and drive somewhere. They can Friday night take it easy, Saturday, you know, carne asada, or Sunday during the Cowboys game, or Longhorn game, Saturday, the Longhorn game Saturday. And anyway, and so they, they, they just, they, you know, I got a pretty good life. Eh, I don't need to go, I'm okay. Why am I gonna vote? Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. I'm okay. And so I have a great deal of respect for people that go vote, even if they don't vote the same way I do. Sure. But I just, I wish more and more people would be encouraged. And I think, I'm telling you, I think what we did on the property tax reforms, I think it's gonna help that. Because there, there are gonna be some times where people, where the council or the, the commissioner's court says, hey, we gotta spend more money. We don't have, this is all we can do. If we wanna do this project or that project or this, or pay or hire more police officers or we don't have enough money or hire more what, uh, firefighters, we don't have enough money or we, whatever. Um, you guys are gonna have to approve it, the public. And when does this go into effect? Next year. So, Next year. Yeah, because we, we're already, Laws don't go into effect till September, right? Sure. And so the, the property tax that that bill so goes from up. September forward. Yeah, yeah. So that that prop, so this the taxes for this year that bill is going to go up pretty much before the or about the same time that the new law goes into effect. So practically speaking, it has to be the next the following tax year. Okay, so it'll yeah. be not this September, the following. Yeah. Year. Okay. So that's interesting. What else? Did, what else? Well, so we're very really happy that you know we also invested uh, four and a half billion. Uh, in education, in addition to cutting property taxes, which were a lot of it is property tax for schools. Uh, but we, you know, I fought really hard, I believe very strongly about this, that we need to be doing more with reference to our, our school teachers. Uh, I've had legislation to increase, to do a billion dollar increase. We fought hard, Paul, we doubled that. We did $2 billion for teacher pay raises. And not only teacher pay raises, school employees will get paid, uh, will get an, an increase as well. And, and I, you know, schools are such an important part of our society. They're such an important part of our future, uh, our destiny as a, as a community, as a country, that I, I've never forgotten that, you know, one of the most important jobs you have in this country is that school teacher. You wouldn't be sitting here. I wouldn't be sitting here. You wouldn't know how to operate that. You wouldn't know how to do contracts. You wouldn't know how to do if it hadn't been for all the teachers, Paul, that got us here. You're absolutely correct. You know, um, when I heard that was going on, I, I said, you know what, we're, hopefully we have, we've thrown a little bit more enthusiasm to the teachers yeah. and, and all our professors over there. Professors in general were yeah. the ones that taught us what we know. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, some of us take advantage of that and others don't. And, and others say, you know what, I don't like going to school. But down 10 years later, you say, oh, you know what, that lesson that was taught to me, it came in handy now. You know, yeah. uh, hey, if they can read or write, they taught them, man. They taught them. You're absolutely correct. And, and reasoning and all these things, teachers taught you these things. I, I like to talk about this, uh, talking about the Constitution, the 13 flags, thir the 13 stripes. stripes on the flag, 13 colonies, original colonies. The most important people in the founding of, of this country, George Washington, you know, Jefferson, Hamilton, all these, John Adams, none of them would have gotten to where they were, and this country wouldn't be where it was. If those guys didn't have teachers that taught them how to read and write, and, 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 and people forget that, man. You know, and what what gets me is, let's go back to the fifties. How many people really knew how to read and write? Sixties, yeah. seventies. Yeah. 
you know, education is what we have to pour ourselves into for educate, educating ourselves to be more enlightened and knowledge upon the future. And, and that's, and people say, well, they didn't know how to read and write. It was true, it was very hard. A lot of people could not go to school. A lot of people could not afford to go to school. My grandparents, I'm they could not. Understand they didn't go to school. So, so you learn at home, or you learn through the community and society how you were going. So you learn through the environment. And a lot of people made a lot of money that way, though, yeah. as well. We have a lot of great individuals that that, that never went to school. Yeah. That that we became founders of yeah. many things here in, in the in the states. But what I'm getting, what I'm trying to get that is the education that we have now. We should be number one in the world. Yeah. And right now we're not. There's there's we've we've kind of lost it along the ways, and I think now with this incentive, what I'm coming back. Of, of the the pay raise for the teachers, I think now you're going to start seeing them be more enthusiastic about teaching. They should have they they became a teacher. They desired to teach, and somewhere along the line, many of them here, because I'm good friends with several, have lost it. So let's bring back that enthusiasm, that desire for them to go teach. Now, hopefully, this is going to give them that incentive. Well, let me tell you something. You know, if you're a school teacher and you love what you're doing, you know the importance, and it's hard. But my, my mother was a school teacher for 35 sure. years. I saw it. I grew up with it. I know how hard a job it is, and I know how she would worry about student. I'm worried about this student. I'm worried about that student. I know he could do better. And they bring that job home. They don't stop. And and so, but if you love doing it, right? Even though it's hard, but you can get another job that pays you five or ten thousand or twelve or fifteen thousand a year more. Or leave, especially if you have a, your own family. It becomes an economic reality, Paul. You got to take the other job. Of course. What are you going to do? And can I blame you? Mm -hmm. No, I, I can't blame you, man. And so, you know, I'm looking at it going, we have to do everything we can. You know, I say, look, in society, teachers get paid this much. Lawyers get paid this much. Doctors get paid this much. You know, engineers get paid this much. Which one's more important? If this one teacher, when the end of the teacher, you wouldn't have the lawyer, the doctor, the engineers. You wouldn't have all those. You wouldn't have. And so you have to, in my view, continue to rise, the, increase the pay for, for, for the most important, certainly one of the most important uh, aspects of our community that will determine our future, whether our future is good or bad, strong, weak. It's going to be because of our educational system. It's going to be because of those, of those teachers that go into those classrooms every day. And so anyway, I, I was very happy that we were, I, I'm the one that candidly that pushed it on the floor of the House. The Senate had passed a pay increase. The House had not. I said, I couldn't believe nobody else was standing up to do it. I'm like, hey, we got to do this. Oh, well, the Senate has it, so we'll negotiate. I don't know. How can we pass a bill in the House of Representatives without a pay increase? I'm, I No. And, and Paul, I took some hits on it, man. People wanted me to let the, you know, déjalo, déjalo ahí, that we'll work with this. No, no. What signal does that send if we pass a bill in the House of Representatives and it does not have a pay raise for teachers? The Senate had 5,000 and ours zero? I'm not gonna stand for it and I, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. So I, got, I took some hits on it because some of the members that, oh man, don't push it. Whoa, really, I gotta fight for this? The Senate, can, you know, the head of the Senate, Dan Patrick, conservative Republican, and he's the one that pushed the $5,000 pay raise and I'm a Democrat and I'm not gonna be for that? I mean, I thought Democrats were for pay raises for teachers, right? So I did, man, I was the guy that kept pushing it and pushing it and I made some people mad, but I pushed it and so we finally got something in there, you know? And I'm proud of that. No, but, but congratulations. I took, I took my, my lumps on it, man. <laughs> well, you, you, know, so, you, you know, when you want something and you, have, and you know what it's, that's right, you're gonna go into those fights, and you have to. Well, I gotta, you know, you know? I, I haven't done a good job of, you know, I, I gotta go around and tell teachers about it, you know, because teachers don't, they don't know how, how hard I fought. No, mm -hmm. I was the only guy out of 150 state reps. I was the only one that pushed it to the limit, to where finally the author of the bill, and they said, let me tell you something, we're gonna vote on this. You either accept the compromise, or you guys can vote it down, but we're gonna have a vote. And nobody else would do the amendment because they were like, no, we don't want to vote on it. We don't want to vote yes or no. Well, what the hell are we here for then? And I said, we're going to vote on it. So finally, the, the author of the bill, you know, he, we sat down or it took us about three days. He finally accepted a compromise because he knew that I wasn't going to blink. I said, no, no. 
teachers are going to get a vote in, in the House of Representatives. They're going to get a vote. I'm guaranteeing you that. So what do you want to do? So thankfully, he, you know, Dan Hubert is Emma, and is a Republican from Humble, close to Houston. Sure. But we worked together, and, he, we, and all these other guys got really, really mad, and he was he wasn't happy about it, but he kept his cool. I kept my cool, and we finally came up with a compromise, and that these teachers are getting something. You know? And I'm also glad that you know, even though I wish I could do more, but on the retired teachers. We also put in there retired teachers, you know, they get 12 checks a year, right? Every month, one check, retirement check. They're going to get a 13th retirement check for the year. So that it'll be a $2,000, what I call it, it's a bonus. It's a $2,000 bonus. So it's something, man. I mean, I pushed hard on that too. But we're also, we put in about, uh, I think it was $235 million so that uh, retired teachers, they're, you know, they're, um, the premiums for their in health insurance was going to go up. So what we did is we took money and we paid for that so their insurance doesn't go up for the next two years. we got to do two years at a time. So I'm happy with that too because teachers, I mean, I know from my mother, teachers live on a very fixed income, Paul. They don't, in retirement, they don't make a lot of money in retirement, brother. And, now, and so if we could at least, I said, we can get this, they get a little bonus, 2000 bucks, and we pay so that their ins health insurance doesn't go up. That's great. That's great. And, and then, like I said, those initiatives, hopefully we can bring back the desire for these teachers to go out there and yeah. that enthusiasm to start up. And also, you know, um, they could, you can have all the desire in the world to teach, but if, if you've got a bunch of kids that don't have manners and respect, that's, we have to start at home, parents. You have to go back in there and just start, you know what, you did that wrong. You have to put the saddle to the paddle because these kids, some of these kids out there are just... I don't know where they're at. Well, let me tell you part of what we also did. This is very important, Paul. It kind of ties into that. It's very important. We worked, these and our Democrats and Republicans worked really hard together. The, the budget spends $7.7 .7 billion on mental health care. And that's very important. One of the things that was a 25% increase from the last time. And one of the things that we've created in there is working with schools more. Because what we see is, and we see it when we have these terrible shootings, right? It's kind of like when it makes the news, when some, some kid freaks out, shoots somebody. Well, you know that that kid was not in the right frame of mind. You know something, just like the story you told me, but you know something was going on. So what we're doing now, really, in, in the most meaningful way for, for the first time, is putting, this, putting money in there where we're going to be helping people across the board, adults and, and, and kids. But importantly, that we work with the schools so that we work with them on these programs that we can connect kids that we see they start having a problem. Okay, we need to talk to them. It's usually going to be a mental health issue. It, ha it has to be. You know, we, we, it's, um, we have to help the kids that, that need help. And there's plenty out there. And, and absolutely. And, and so here's the thing. If we, if we catch those kids early, if they've got some issue going on, some mental health care issue, and we catch it early, Paul, not only number one, it, it's good for the overall system because you're not wasting you're not wasting resources on a kid that's spinning their wheels. You've identified. You're trying to figure out. You're trying to help them how they can do better. Then they can learn. They're not going to get in trouble. They, till they get in trouble, a lot of them they end up in the criminal justice system. Sure. That ends up costing us a bunch of money. So we we're able if we if we work with these kids early enough, we're able to identify the things they need help with. They don't end up in trouble. They don't end up in jail. They don't end up end up in the youth correction or later in, in our in our prisons, we save a lot of money doing that. And you know what? You've made that kid's life so much better. And Paul, you'll know this as a parent, and I know it as a parent. You're making the parents' life better. You're making their whole family's life better because whatever that kid was struggling with, and they do struggle. We know that. We know that more and more we're identifying people have a, there's, there's something that they've got. But, but if you work with them, you can address it. And what's happened for decades and decades is we just thought, no, pues no se porta bien, no. what's wrong with them? That's the key question, what's wrong with them? Yeah, a lot of them, there's something wrong with them. Some of them, attitude adjustment, no of doubt course. about it. You know, spoiled kid, they always had their way, all of a sudden you're starting to say you can't have your way, right. just yeah. spoiled. That's one thing. But somebody that's got an issue, Paul, we've got to help them. And, and, and I'm very happy that we, we work so hard on this. That, uh, that now a lot of kids, we're going to be able to help them across schools, across the state of Texas. And we need it. And yeah. we need it. We, we need it bad. Yeah, absolutely. We need it bad. Um, 
another thing that just popped up the other yeah. day, and we were, we were talking about this earlier, state income tax. What's mm -hmm. going on with that? Because we read, we read it right now. Well, I, I, I fought real hard, and I, and I gave a speech. I was the only Democrat, to be honest with you. I was the only Democrat that got up and spoke in favor of it. I'm not the only one that voted for it, but, you know, we, we had a constitutional amendment. When you have a constitutional amendment, it has to get not just a simple majority in the House and in the Senate, it has to get two-thirds of the members vote for it. And if we vote for it two-thirds, then we put it on the ballot, and the people of Texas will vote for it this November, right? And we'll have a few amendments on there. Well, one of them, uh, state income tax. So we wanted to put into the Constitution that we will not have a state income tax and make it very clear. It's one of the things that has set us apart from many other states, most sure. other states, to be honest with you. There's a reason why more and more companies from California have moved to Texas, from, from uh, Rhode Island, from Maine, from New York. They're coming to Texas and there's a reason. And, and, a, and a big part of that reason is that we don't have a state income tax. So one of my buddies is a Republican, uh, you know, Pat Fallon, he used to be a rep, he's a senator now, and he's the one that was his bill. And so we, we passed it in the Senate, came over, and some people argued against it. I said, look, here's the deal. We put, the, we put this on the ballot, people can vote, put it in the Constitution. If someday the people wanted to change it, they could change it, okay? It's not like you can't. You can do another constitutional amendment. I don't think that will ever happen. I just don't. And I've had some colleagues, you know, reps and senators, that they've disagreed. No, okay, we're going to have it. And you know what? I don't believe so. I believe that the people of Texas already pay one income tax, and one is enough. And I cannot see the people of Texas ever saying, oh, you know what? Let me pay a second income tax, because one isn't enough. Let me pay another one. And they say, well, no, you could tell them you'll use the money for this or that. I said, I don't care. I'm just telling you, I don't believe in that. So I said, so I voted, and I got up and I gave a speech. And again, there weren't very many of us that spoke, and I was the only Democrat that spoke. But I got up and I spoke, and I said, this isn't about being a Democrat or Republican. This is about giving the people of Laredo and the people across the state of Texas a chance to, to, to let their voice be heard. And if they want to put this in the Constitution, no state income tax, let them vote for it. If they want to vote it down, they can vote it down. But I'm pretty sure if we put it in front of them, it's going to pass. Yeah. No. I, I and, 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 and the wording is a little bit, you know, but then we read it and how would you? Yeah, because it's like the wording says, vote yes if you don't want an income tax. So it's a, you know, but I don't know how you, you do it, man. It's just, and, you, you know, know. So folks, when you guys go vote, vote over there. Yes means no, and no means yes. <laughs> so that's the only way we can, you know. Well, but I'm going to folks, are you listening? Yes means no income tax. Thanks. Yes. Okay. Yes means no income tax. There you go. When you go on the ballot that, and vote. That, that's the way to say it. Yes means no, no income tax. tax. Because, because, because yeah. if you do it the other way, and it's like, what? Yes means no, no means yes. I don't know. Yes means no income tax. So anyway, that's what we're so going to do. You know, it's, it's, and it's gonna, yeah, hopefully it passes. If people read. It'll pass. It, it read. You, know, well, you have to well, go in there and read. I'll come back and do a show. Right <laughs> <after that. laughs> we'll do and, it. And we'll you're going to go, man, uh, it passed by a lot. As I told you, Paul. No, it's good. It's, I it's predict good. that good. it will pass by, let's see, let's predict. I, I predict it's going to pass by 84%. I hope so. But, uh, and uh, you know what, what, what gets me is every time they're trying to pass something like a tax or it always gets shut down. Yeah. People do not want any more taxation. No, I mean, they've had it. And, and, and they'll and, come out and vote for that, but they won't vote for anybody else. You know, they'll come out there in groves to vote for those amendments, those you, referendums. But, those but we've had in Laredo and in other parts of the state where you'll have a, a like, like a, a, you know, bond election. Or Some of them pass. I mean, the public is going to vote for what the public thinks they need. And if it doesn't pass the smell test with them, they're going to vote it down. So I think it's a good balance that we still have city and county government. Hey, they have a lot of money. They get, to, they get a lot of money from taxes. They get to do a lot of good work. We at the state, we get a lot of money from taxes. We get to do a lot of good work. The federal government, they get a lot of money. From they get to do a lot of good work. But at some point, you know, they, you say, because you know, Paul, what happens sometimes when you get in these positions, like I'm in this position or you're in the city or the county, you're in there and so you're really engaged and you see what's going on in the community, you see what's going on in other cities and other counties, and you go, you know, that's a good idea, I'd like to do that here. And I think the people would benefit from it. Okay, great, go convince the people. Because it's gonna cost, they gotta pay for it. You're not gonna pay for it out of your pocket. If you're on the city council, or if you're mayor, or if you're on the county commissioners, you're not paying it out of your pocket. The people that we represent and that put us there, they're paying for it. 
So if it's going to take more money than what you're getting already and that you can get under the law that we just passed, take it to the people. And I promise you, if it's something they want, they're going to vote it in. They'll say, you know what? I'll pay for that. It's like our own, you know, your kid comes to you, Dad, I really want this, I really want, okay, what is it? So you start talking about it. Okay, well, you know what? That's going to help him learn this, going to help him learn that. Okay, we'll do it. Hey, Dad, uh, I want to get this. What is it? Well, it's a motorcycle. Nah. <laughs> you, 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 don't need, you don't need it. You don't need a motorcycle. No, it's, it's Where you get the motorcycle? Okay. No, you know, that you're absolutely, yeah, you're, you're, you're correct on all that point, you know, and, and uh, but, you know, in some of these bonds, especially the ones for the schools, yeah. they say, you know, we need so many millions to build two schools or three more schools. People usually say yes. Why? Because it's education. And, and, and sometimes they say no. Sometimes you know they say no. Because if they look, because they look at the proposal, I've seen this when it goes down, and they feel like, wait a minute, you didn't explain exactly what you're doing here. Well, wait a minute. Explain to me what you're doing. And if it's not clear, it won't pass. If it's clear, and you make a compelling argument, and I think a lot of people like here in, in Laredo, people know we're growing. We grow a lot, and we got more kids and more kids, and, and people do know it's important that they get educated. But those kids get educated. The public knows that, and the public supports that. But I think, to your point, that's why most of the time it will pass. But you better get up there, and you better lay it out. You better not hide anything. You better not play games. You better tell the people what it is that you want to do and why it's important. And usually they're going to go with you. Sometimes, but sometimes they're not. And you know what? That's okay. Lincoln said, Abraham Lincoln said, the government they get is never much better or worse than the people deserve. And what he meant by that was, they get to decide. You vote this way, you're going to get what you deserve, more or less. Sometimes you really made a bad choice and you get worse than you deserve. But you know what? Sometimes you, you get somebody in there and they do even better than you thought they were going to do. So he said it's never much better or worse than they deserve. Because at the end of the day, they made the decision to put that person in there. Absolutely. And it's the same thing with all these projects. The people will decide. No, you're absolutely correct. And that's why I tell people, you know, if, if, if you go out there and you never vote, and you never vote, but you're always complaining that this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, it's your fault because you're not out there voting. And you see that here in the arena for a long time. Yeah. I tell people, do not gripe. If you have not voted, do not gripe. It's a fair thing to say. And, you know, I, I wish that when, when you say that, that people go, you know what, you're right. Yeah. I gotta go vote. You know, because you do. You see a lot of people that will complain, and then you ask them a simple question, you go vote. Because the thing is, you can check, it's public record. I can go check. You can tell me you voted. I've had people tell me they voted, and I looked it up, and they didn't vote. I'm like, come on, man, you know? Yeah. Come on, man. But no, you know, other things that we did, you know, we, we put another, Paul, another $6 billion specifically into transportation for um, tourism. So I think that as time goes on, we're going to see some of those dollars come here because we still have a lot of tourism that happens. We wish you had more, and, 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 and we've had more in the past. You know, but with some of the problems we've got in Mexico, it's, it's been affected. But people still like to come to the border. It's a, it's, a, it's a fascinating part of the state for people that are not from the border. So, you know, that $6 billion for transportation, roads, and all that to help us with, the, with economic development with reference to tourism, I think it's going to help us too. And so it's those kinds of things that, you know, we look at as long-term investments, but that's going to help everybody. You know, uh you're absolutely correct. You know, we, we talk about tourism, tourism, how Mexico, everybody used to go across. Yeah. We, we used to go across oh, and yeah. come back and nothing was ever done. Against them, you know, but uh, what I'm saying was that things changed. Yeah. That was another country. We have to do our tourism here. Yeah. We have to make Laredo popular. Us Laredoans have to wake up and make Laredo popular. Yeah. It's not ideas coming from elsewhere. It's our ideas coming yeah. up there. We have to do it ourselves. That's a really good point, man, because, I mean, me personally, you know, I didn't grow up here. I grew up coming here all the time because my grandparents, my father was born here, my grandparents were here. So I would come, and I was always so magical for me to go downtown, man. It was, sure. it was always a wonderment, right? And so it's such a wonderful historic part of of the state, really, right. right? It's true. And and so I know that people around the state love to come and see historic. I mean, that's our own French Quarter. You know, you go to New Orleans, the French Quarter, that's our French Quarter downtown. And, you know, call it the Mexican Quarter. I don't care, call it whatever you want, but it's history, you know? And that 
that part of town is just as old as New Orleans, by the way. Sure. And so I hope that with time, as you're mentioning, that we do more to attract more tourists to come to Laredo, Texas, right? And I think we can. La Posada is an anchor, and I appreciate, I really do, the and Faskin, and the Faskin all around. What, what they try to do. They have put so much money into it. They, it's good faith, you know, because they, they're, they're years that I don't have any doubt they've lost money. But they know how important that place is. And then the San Agustin Church, you know, and the plaza, and, and just continue to build on that. I mean, it, it, for me, I still get excited when I go there because from the time I was a little kid. And then, of course, we would walk across, you know. But I think we, I hope and I believe that we continue like, like we did with the with the Fine Arts Center. Sure. Right? Um, and we, I, I think we have to blow that up. You know, I used to have, I used to have a, a, a pizzeria in downtown Dallas. Yeah. And um, people used to go to Dallas to see where the tragedy happened, the assassination oh, of a president. Yeah. That was a focal point. Yeah. You know, and then people would go down there and you had all the restaurants and bars building off of that. So they built it off a tragedy, yeah. and they were it was became part. Okay, sure. so so daily plaza. I understand. So right now we have not tragedy. We have beautiful architecture that's down there. Right. We have to, as a city, not push it. As a city, come into a commune and say, you know what? Let's attract the business here, not force it. Right. And and uh, so I think that's where they have to balance it out because there's there's one one thing to say. We're gonna do this, and you all better do it because we're doing. We're telling you and say, you know what? If you're gonna open up a business over here, we're gonna give you an incentive. We're gonna do this. We're right. gonna help. Right. You know, we're gonna be investing into that. You know, if you rent from us, the rent's gonna be less than stuff like that. And I think that's gonna happen because uh, Dallas at one time had bought a lot of those old buildings down there, and they were actually the ones that were leasing those buildings. Well, look at Oak Cliff. Okay, in sure. Dallas. You know Oak Cliff. I was there not too long ago, and. The part of Oak Cliff is, is a concentration of uh, African Americans. Another part is a concentration of Hispanic, yeah, Mexican, yeah. Mexican American. And what they've done there, it's, it's wonderful, man. They did what you just described. They've taken these old buildings, they've invested a little bit, they've attracted investors, and, and so businesses are popping up. I don't forget, forget what that main street is there, but it's like a, it's like a downtown, right? Sure, and, that's more. Yeah, and it's great, man. Oh my gosh. I was so impressed with that. I went uh, maybe in November or something of last year, and, and, I, and I met with one of the guys that was investing. You know, and he, he's actually Cuban American. You know, he, he came from Cuba when he was a little kid, and he got very wealthy, did very well, and, and he's been investing in helping people. You know, get loans and build a build build a business, and it's a really good point. And, I, and I'm sure that our, our city has thought of it, but I, but I think that we need to continue to build on that and, and do outreach to other cities and other, maybe even other states, and say, hey, you know, you've got a business, that, that come, and, come and open it here. Because first of all, you're gonna have all the traffic that comes from Mexico that they'll buy stuff from you over here, right? And so I think that we could turn a lot of those stores that used to be, you know, open that aren't now. Yeah, sure. Uh, we could do something with them and get investors to come in. At least we need, we need to try. You know, um, Moving down back in, yeah. in 2000, and then probably 1998, 99, I was moving down to open up a restaurant, I'm executive chef. So um, I was with this day, Freeman, yeah. uh, the, you know, the real estate. Yeah. And he goes, where are we looking at? And so we're looking at different houses. We we're looking at the Montemayor house at one particular time, and uh, I was looking to invest down there. And he showed me this one restaurant that was subterranean in Laredo. And it was between, it connected four corners in the bottom. We went in there with flashlights because there were no lights. It had a whole 50s uh, bar shake restaurant right. inside with a decor. And it had just, it, it was like if somebody just turned off the lights. Where is it, man? And uh, to me, I have to ask them because it's downtown. It's in and it's, downtown? It's, it's up terrain. You enter in one, and you enter in one corner. You can come out in the other corner. It's in the middle well, of. Man, you know, I'm curious. I'm you like know what I'm saying? Because and I, when I saw that, and some people said it was the old pharmacy downtown, and and but the air conditioning, you know, didn't work. It had just been shut down. It had been shut down for decades. Right. And um, he said, "Man, this would be nice. What would you think?" And I said, 
nightclub I was thinking about back, back then, you yeah. know, I think, yeah. if, if anything. And, and uh, so I don't know how come they have not taken advantage of that. Because it's there. It's a, it's a living monument of historic mm -hmm. monument. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was, what, 20 years ago when I came out. Yeah. I don't know if it's still the same now. Or it's or they it may tore still it down. Be the same, it might still be the same. You know, we have to talk to we have to talk to Freeman where it's where it's at. You know, and and uh, where exactly it was at because it's actually a part of town that I'm gonna call Larry and ask. Yeah, I'll ask because him because it was something that you know. He'll, he'll, he'll know. He knows every, every and uh, and that was just something that was like wow. You know the the upholstery in the fifties that put yeah. you know stuff that you know going back in the future. You know when they entered the little oh yeah and, right. the, and the whole chrome and the bar and the whole the whole nine and it was right there connected. Yeah, to and it. people would like that, man. I mean, and, like and, that, and, and, it's you know, history. It's, it's history, and to me, I was like, and they had they had other like little shopping stores in there when you were walking at stores down and come out the other side. And I was like, this was going on in the thirties, forties, fifties. You know, that's the art deck. That's the deco that we yeah, have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how come it's not being used now? You know, that to me, that's that's impressive. And that's something that we have to preserve. Maybe the city can go in there, or the county can go in there. Well, I'm going to ask work. about it because I'm just curious, and, and and maybe maybe we can even get a historic designation for Before. it from the state that will make it more attractive for an investor or whatever. But I'm, you talk about Larry Freeman, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah so I'm going to call Larry and tell him you told me about it because I I've never even heard of that man. It's it's down there. You, you, I can't I can't know because he was with him and he goes, oh, I've got to show you something. And park and get yeah. and open, went we inside, and we went down. You know, but, well, anyway, we but that, but I think there's a lot of potential here in Laredo. Sure. And we'll continue to grow. We're not going to get smaller. We're going to continue to grow. And also, I think with reference to the border cities, I, I think I'm right about this, Paul. I've seen this. You have the, the, the notable border cities, Brownsville, McAllen, Laredo, the, you know, and the smaller ones, Eagle Pass, Del Rio, and, and, and then uh, El Paso. But I, I promise you, what I've seen through the years is this is the city that gets the most attention. This is the city that people are most fascinated with when it comes to the border. You, it just is. And, and I've got friends in all those cities, and I've got reps from all those cities, and they're all buddies of mine. But I would tell them right now, and they know I'm telling the truth, is that you, you don't, you'll hear more people say, oh, Laredo, Laredo, Laredo kids. You know, you don't have to say Brownsville, Brownsville, McAllen, you know. It's not. The interest is Laredo. We have a history. We're one of the oldest cities in the country, you know. We go back to the 1700s, really, and so I think that's part of it, and and also that Interstate 35 that it, it, it starts here, or it ends here, however you want to look at it, and I think people see it on the map, and and it gets their attention, and so I, I think that we have a lot of potential in terms of att attracting investors, for the, in terms of new businesses that have the historic aspect in terms of downtown, but also to do more PR, where we can get more people that want to come down here. No, no, we have to, and you know, I think I think we've missed the buck somewhere along the way. Remember that old old saying that used to be here back in the in in the eighties, eighty six. Keep the buck in Laredo. Yeah, remember that. Absolutely. I think we have to bring that slogan back. Yeah, and, and uh, bring the buck to Laredo. And bring the buck to Laredo. <laughs> Keep it and bring it. You know, yeah. but uh, and I think that's what we need to do. Because and I get I get so irritated of hearing people that oh I'm going to go to San Antonio to get an attorney. Or I'm going to go to San Antonio to get a dentist. Well, how about the ones here? Yeah. Or I'm going to go get go to San Antonio to get my doctor because the ones here. I don't know. We have great physicians. We have great attorneys. We have great dentists. You know, of course, here dentists work. work people are going to go to Mexico for that. You know, that that's a mech, I guess, for for dent, dentist work. You know? <laughs> but uh, what what I'm saying is that we have the talent here. We have great sports. You know, we have we have the World League coming up for the pony. Yeah, I think you know that's great. Th that's great. I go. We should take advantage of that. The city, the city, and everybody should be focused on that because that brings stuff here. Absolutely. You know, there was a couple of things that came out, and I want to and the um, that people read, and and then we had a couple of worsts in some polls. Uh -huh. Worst lifestyle, and worse for singles, and worse for raising a family. Mm -hmm. And I'm like. I looked at it and I said, number one, where did these polls take place? Well, I mean, yeah, it's a real simple, it's all subjective, man. So, you know, we're one of the safest cities in America. Let's just start with that. So that's like should be, carry a lot of weight, weight. on that. You know, but yeah. also, okay, so the, the people who sat down, uh, I bet you nobody that grew up in Laredo. Were the ones that voted for it. Yeah, 
So why don't, why don't we put some people on the red? They might think that uh, living in, uh, you know, uh, Dallas is worse. Than, than living here. So, you, you know, know, so it depends on where they got this polls from. But it's a good eye-opener. Yeah. I'm looking at that as a positive thing. Well, you know, you're calling us worse. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to strive to make it better. That's the way to look at and it. That, and, you know, let's not hide, you know, some of, some of the uh, city council, uh, they, they sent me a, a thing with Archie Bunker. And he goes, oh, my God. You know, all this worst, you one more step to being Detroit or something like that, you know. But, and I was like, okay, I'm going to po post it up there just to, for people to understand, hey, we have to strive. This is my city. I'm proud of my city. Yeah. You know, and, and we look at it in different facets. We get, we get a World Series of, of, of Pony League here. We got, uh, you know, we got a great state rep, not because you're standing here, you're up there that actually changed. Uh, tra changed uh, educators and got paid, and yeah. you're changing up there. You're standing up there and telling re re Republicans and Democrats, we need to work together. That doesn't happen. Yeah. Okay, we, we you know we need to say, you know what? I'm from Laredo. We have great boxing. We have four world champions. Look, I mean, during, I mean yeah. during the session, I got up there and and it was May, I guess, April, uh, where. They announced, Forbes magazine announced that we had officially become the busiest in, uh, busiest port in America. And so I stood up there and said, members, I want to make an announcement. Laredo, Texas, we're the busiest port in America. In America. And we don't have ships. We don't have ocean. We don't have, you know, harbors. But we passed L.A., New York, I mean, Houston, New Orleans, Florida, yeah, Miami. I said, that's pretty... You know, and then I started going through the numbers about the, the, the in terms of the dollars, the billions of dollars. Man, Paul, it was so interesting. Everybody like, got quiet. Of course, you know, because everybody said, you know what? But you know, and and we are, we're the best. And that that should make us strive. You know what? We need a bigger airport now. Yeah. We need freight planes leaving left and right. That should make us strive to for uh, for the train companies to say, you know what? We have to fix the railroads. Let me tell what you, you're doing. One of the things, and I worked on this, Henry Quad really, it was a federal deal, but I, I got involved in it, and the community did, private sector, public sector. We worked so hard, Paul, and finally got, it took so much, because it's an international agreement with Mexico and the United States. But we have here the only airport where you can clear customs when you're, so, so let's say you've got something from the U.S. flying in from St. Louis to going to Mexico. You land here. Okay, and we have the the, the SAT the SAT offices for customs for Mexico. You clear customs here going into Mexico. That's a big deal, and we're the only state. We're the only one that does it. The only other one that does it is, uh, I think, uh, New York has an agreement with Ireland, but that's only for passengers. It's not for freight. Okay, so we're the only ones that can really do that, and that took a lot, a lot of work. That's going to, you talk, when you, and I'm thinking about it because you said more planes coming in with freight, that's going to happen because yeah. this is the biggest airport, okay, this is an airport where Air Force One can land and has landed. It's the biggest, longest runway, even longer in San Antonio. So we have a, so much potential, and now with that, where you can come in here, boom, clear customs, and now you don't have to worry about clearing customs when you land in Mexico, dude. That's a big deal, and I think that's going to lead to even more more companies coming in here. And we got to sell that more, but it's there. And no, you know, no, it's, it's there. I mean, I think we've, we've done great. I think we can do better. I think our, leader, our, our leaders, like, like yourself and everybody, should look at this worst thing and say, really? Now we're going to strive to make it even better. Even better. Yeah. Because, number one, I moved down from Dallas to Laredo because I had, I had a young daughter. I lived for... 14, 15 years in the same place. I didn't know my neighbors. So like, eh, you know, I didn't know who they were. Understand what I'm saying? So, so I moved down here because I was raising somebody. Be around people that you know. Yeah. Be around people that you love. And so, Laredo changed. Okay. Now, I think the attitude of the people. We have to start waking up and saying, you know what? I'm proud of Laredo. Yeah. And, we're, and, we're we, and we are. And I, have a I have a cap there in my office. You walk in, I have a bookshelf and it's. It says we're ready to proud. Mm -hmm. you know? And we need to show them with all the sports. We have to get up there. Yeah. All the, uh, the girls' dance teams, the theater. Hey, wait a minute. You know what? They said this about us. Let's make them pay. Yeah. Let's make them pay with, with us moving up ahead. Again, um, 
I want to thank you for standing Amen. up. And it's always fun, and it's like, you know, the friendship that we've had, it's, it's great, and uh, keep doing what you're doing. Well, I, love your, I love your digs here, man. Thanks, thanks. I love it. It just it just has a wonderful feel to it. It sure really does. So you did a good job. Well, I think you said your kids. My, my kids were the ones that, that put up there. I had, a, I had a friend of mine that helped me with, with a rustic work on the back, and we're trying to say, well, you know, how can we make it when people come out here and just sit down and we can just talk, you know? It's a great, it's, 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 it's perfect for that. It makes it feel very, very uh, good home feeling, you know. Well, thank you. Good, brother. Well, thank you, you again, it. and uh, come back. I mean, we have to definitely do it before, but, but after the election in November. I'm we, have to, we, have, we have to come back and, 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 and <laughs> well, we have to. And anything else that comes in, you know, bring, bring it our way. You okay. know, we need to go out there and folks, again, pay attention, go out and vote. Absolutely. Let somebody, Absolutely. This is America, go vote. And remember, in a couple of weeks, the kids are going back to school. Let's drive safe. Let's stop texting. Absolutely. Until next time. Peace. All right, brother. So it's going to pass. We're